I'm sure you can see me. Hello. Uh, if you could just add in the chat box, if you can see me. Uh, there, I just took away. <laughs> All right, I forgot I had a cover over the uh, eyes. Just let me know if you can uh, see me and hear me and um, things seem to be fine. I think I just lost the internet connection. So uh, let me get that back into place so that we can get started. All right, so isn't this a lot of fun? All right, and uh, there's Charles. Hello, Charles, and welcome. Uh, hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, yes. Yes, welcome to um, today's session. Today, um, the session is about fun and fun songs. So not only fun, but also songs. And a little bit about Charles. Uh, Charles is right among the other presenters. There he is, right there. And Charles is a lot of things, which I think is interesting. Uh, Charles will tell you more as he goes, but Charles is involved in music. So it's music. It's teaching English for the past. Yep. Uh, yeah. Years. Hello. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Wherever you are. Yeah. Teaching English. So here we are. <laughs> At a university in Bologna and also involved in fun songs because I think it's about combining what we love with what we do, and, and that's what it's all about. It's a passion for sharing um, with others. So Charles, I'm going to uh, let you continue. I'm just gonna be in the background if you <laughs> need me. Yeah. Uh, welcome everyone. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add, feel free to ask questions. I'll be responding in pink. <laughs> So I'm Nelly Deutsch as Charles in pink. Well, Nelly in pink. Oh, yeah. Getting, so on, for, getting on for more than that. Okay. Yeah. I think people are used sure. to that already, Charles. Quite a few times. Uh, and yeah. since technology yeah. allows us to come in as anyone. The only thing is, Nelly, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see the chat box. Yeah. Uh, you still can't see it? Right. So let's start. Um, as, uh, sure. William yeah. Uh, said, uh, I am very much involved in using uh, expressive and creative modes of uh, communication to enhance the, the learning process. Yes, the language learning process. Um, let me, can you, right. can you, um, Tell me how I can see the chat box. The only thing is, Nelly, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see the I chat know. box. I don't know. I suggest, Charles, the, the only thing I right. suggest. Right, so is let's you start. Um, as uh, we hear you, Nelly, we hear um, you very well. We hear you. Uh, said, we hear you. Uh, we hear, I am we hear you. Trust me, very much involved you. in uh, using just, oh, yeah. uh, expressive let me just tell the, uh, and let me creative modes uh, of Charles communication. Cannot. To enhance the, the, the learning process. Right, I suggest you um, yes, refresh the language your page learning process. You can do that. Um, yeah. Nelly, can you can you um, tell me how I can the see the chat box? Like Otherwise, that. I feel as though I'm a bit isolated and marooned. Strange things on some happen. Kind of this is Nelly. Digital, uh, I can hear Charles, uh, but Island. I don't see him anymore. Um, no, nobody so, can hear me. Uh, yes. Um, Charles is on a Mac, and I think funny things could happen on Macs, even though. You know, if you stay on a oh, you page can hear me? too long, yes. strange things stick to that <laughs> online page. Uh, and Charles has been, has had this class open, I think, for the past five or six hours. So um, can you, uh, well, I know you can hear me, yeah. so I don't have to ask that. Could you just add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add, as I always say. So okay, uh, where I'm are you? Are now. you in the kitchen? Are you page. having your coffee? um tea milk vodka whiskey pina colada um or just grape juice oh is it a lot better today i have no idea why uh why it's better or why anything is what it is so good afternoon uh mary tear and you are from peru that's great. I think my husband's going to Peru um, next month or soon. Great. 
I'm glad it's clear because uh, sometimes it's not clear. And um, hello, Abhilash. They have improved from yesterday. Are you serious? Give me a thumbs up if things have improved from yesterday. That would be really interesting. Thumbs up if things have improved for you since yesterday. That is so nice to hear. Um, because yesterday was really difficult, wasn't it? Uh, it's hard when people's connections don't work too well. So let's see if I can get somebody here. Um, anything else you'd like to add? I see that only Tom is with the desktop, with IQ desktop, and Donna too. Hello, Donna. I hope you're experiencing uh, good sound, audio, and video. So if any of you are interested, this is completely free, and it allowed, I think Charles is coming back, allows you to not worry about Java or Flash, and that's the WizIQ desktop, and you can download it. So Charles, you're back. I'm not sure if you're back. Um, oh, you are. You're back as a presenter. How's the chat? You can't still can't see the chat? Oh, great. I was just saying, you know, if we, great. I think if we're on the same page for a long time, and Charles, you were in the classroom for about five hours, I think. So maybe that's why things kind of stick to things. No, that's okay. I'm just, oh. Yes, let's do. Uh, I can, yeah, I can see the chat. Yes. I can see the chat now. Uh, well, not exactly five hours, but sometimes I just wanted to make sure everything was working out. And uh, we had some dishes with the, yeah. Uh, anyway, let, let, let's get back to it. And uh, first of all, a big uh, hello to everyone. Thanks very much for, uh, for coming along and taking part in this. I hope you find it interesting, useful, and enjoyable. Uh, as I was saying before the, um, uh, the technical problem there, um, yeah, I'm very interested in using expressive and emotional experiences to enhance the language learning process. And one of these, of course, is music. And... Uh, in particular, action songs, as you can see from the introductory slide to this presentation. And you can see music and mime, rhythm and rhyme, that's what it's all about. Um, using different, if you like, different intelligences, uh, different ways of using the mind and the body uh, to the traditional classical, uh, classic um, sit down teacher fronted classroom experiences that uh, probably many of us remember from our from our youth, um, I don't want to necessarily undermine the uh, traditional ways of teaching a language because uh, uh, they, uh, I, I, you know, I really don't believe that there is just one methodology that has to be uh, used. Every teacher has her own style. It's just that these days now we have access to so many different uh, inputs and stimuli that uh, it is sometimes a little bit difficult for teachers to um, to find their own style and their own voice but that comes through experience and uh, my experience really is working with children working with music working with songs and using songs uh, and in particular action songs uh, to introduce new language rather than just uh, uh, entertain them maybe towards the end of a lesson when everybody's a little bit uh, tired or uh, uh, this is a way of using the power of music and not just music but also mime uh, tpr to uh, to ensure that the children will never forget what they're learning let me give you some more details about that um, and um, Oh, hi, I saw, is that Marie today? She saw me in the Evo webinars. Great. Well, good to have you back again. So uh, let me move on to the next 
slide and here we have uh, a quote from a probably uh, one of the most uh, important influences on me, Mario Rinfalucri. Uh, I don't know, ha has anybody heard of Mario Rinfalucri? If you, if you have, can you write something in the text box? Hello? Anyway, Mario Rinvalucri is a famous uh, ELT, EFL, ESL, whatever you want to call it, guru. And he uh, operates in uh, Canterbury in uh, the UK, uh, very much part of Pilgrims. And um, he uh, has uh, written many, many books and many, many, uh, run many teacher training courses. And he was very encouraging to me when I was starting off uh, with fun songs in, in the late 1990s. And um, uh, anybody who is in English language teaching um, or has been for some years, especially in the UK, but not only there, would have, would have heard of Mario Rinvalucri. And I was honored to have him actually make a comment about what I do, as you can see there on the slide. Um, so I'd like to ask, put this question to you. Um, as teachers, uh, why why teach through action songs? Yeah, why is this particular uh, tool, this instrument, an action song, so so um, effective, so useful? Um, well, this is the um, question. Let's just see, is the slide working there? Yeah, so we've gone a bit too fast. Yeah. So, well, the first reason I would give is because they are fun. And uh, that really explains why uh, fun songs exist. I mean, because we started off working with songs and immediately it became obvious that, you know, the children were loving it, that they loved it, and they're having a lot of fun. So the first reason I would give to um, this question is is fun that they are fun provided provided uh, you uh, know how to get the right balance between teaching and uh, not forcing the song onto the children um, it, it's very important uh, that this kind of activity which can be uh, very enjoyable doesn't lose that uh, entertaining and enjoyable edge because as soon as it does then you know it's not going Um, programmed and be planned over a series of, uh, of classroom lessons. In other words, um, we can talk about an action song module rather than just uh, teaching a song and then that's the end of the activity. And this is something that I've been developing over the last few years, action song modules. And so it is important that the children are and continue to have fun right from the beginning and as soon as they're not having fun then you have to stop uh, and maybe come back to it the next time okay so when I say fun just to emphasize that uh, it means smiling faces energetic active children who are really all working together to learn a song another reason why we should teach through action songs is this they are extremely effective. Okay, I'm just um, looking at the chat there. Somebody's Tom Hodges. Hello, Tom. You're talking about um, uh, adult learners. I just quickly answer that. Yes, of course. Adult the the method itself of using action songs, presenting language through action songs, works. Uh, it works whatever the age of the children. Obviously. Um, you know, when you're working with teenagers or children, 
going into uh, adolescence, uh, the onset of puberty, it's not so easy to use action songs for the simple reason that the children themselves, from a psychological uh, viewpoint, they often tend to associate this kind of activity with the younger children. They see it as uh, sort of childish, which is a shame in a way, but you know how fashion conscious uh, and gregarious um, 10 and 11 year olds are. I mean, everybody has to follow the crowd. Unfortunately, that's, uh, I suppose it's part of human nature in a way, especially in at school. And so, you know, if something is seen to be uncool, <laughs> then it's not going to be so easy to convince everyone to do it. And this activity only works if everybody, all the students, all the boys and girls in the class are really into it. They're really enjoying it. They're having fun. But to answer your question, it is very effective, whatever the age. And I have taught action songs to adults working in the universe, I've taught uh, uh, action songs to um, 23, 24, 25 year old engineering students in India, and they loved it. And uh, provided you get that right attitude from the students that they understand, you know, that it's something that's going to help them uh, accelerate their acquisition of the language, improve their pronunciation, et cetera, et cetera then uh, it can work at any age. But it is difficult, impossible to use this kind of method with children who are in their teens or coming into their teens. So just going back to the, um, to the, um, the reasons why we should teach through action songs is that they are extremely effective instruments. Yeah, they work. And the language that is learned in the song stays in the um, permanent memory of the learner. Yep. Uh, another reason why this method is particularly uh, effective is that it's useful, and why we should use it is that the um, the whole process is fast. Yeah, it's speedy. You can teach. Uh, for example. Let's take an example of, I don't know, um, the parts of the body, which lends itself very well to, to this kind of activity. Uh, there are lots of songs for that. I mean, one like heads, what's that one? Heads, hands, feet. But we have a song, a fun songs, which I'm going to show you in a moment, which teaches 14 parts of the body in less than 120 seconds, uh, as well as um, several very useful um, phrasal verbs connected with movement and believe me the children won't forget those words okay so it is a fast method it is a fast method which also leads to uh, um, permanent memory acquisition is the technique it's memorable so um, I've just pulled up four uh, adjectives there to describe action songs uh, which um, I use to, to, you know, to justify teaching through action songs. Um, I think probably the best thing now is to uh, show you a video. And uh, I've got a video here. Let me see if I can just pull up the media player. That's not the one I wanted. Yeah, time to play. Here it is. Okay, um, should be coming along. Okay, here it is. Now, before I put it on, we just for the rather small size of the video. This was um, because of the um, the frame, uh, the frames of, of the way it was recorded. Unfortunately, I tried to get it bigger. But then the resolution <laughs> was so um, poor that I, I decided to keep it at the same size. But I think it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, we're, we're not uh, Hollywood here. We don't need to get the perfect uh, video. You need to get the idea. And um, here is a, a film of a class of um, uh, primary school children from Riga in Latvia, where I lived for some time. And um, many of the schools using my songs. And the great thing about these songs is they can also be performed by the children to the parents. And this is a film of a class which is not uh, a song called Time to Play, um, which I'm going to talk about 
in more detail after you've seen the video. But I'd just like to uh, show you the video to uh, illustrate how, um, how much fun and enthusiasm this kind of uh, language learning activity can generate. So here we go. Okay, so there, there's the video. I was looking at the chat while people were watching that and some interesting uh, comments about the uh, accent, the pronunciation that the children have. And I'd just like to emphasize um, another reason why uh, action songs are such uh, an effect teaching tool, teaching and learning instrument, is the um, phonological, the, um, uh, the aspect uh, of the sound system because if you can teach new language through song um, then uh, there is in that learning process an intrinsic um, subliminal encouragement to correct pronunciation what am I trying to say here basically this that uh, you know you can't really sing a song without correct accentuation and pronunciation, uh, especially when you consider aspects of the sound of language, such as mime, which come through in, in songs. So um, it's a really great way of uh, leading the children towards intelligible, correct pronunciation. And I think that comes through uh, the way that those Latvian children um, you know, pronounce the language. Um, I could talk a lot more about about pronunciation and and music, but um, let's um, look at what we can do with a, an action song module um, such as Time to Play. Um, so the point is this: we use the action songs to present new language. It's not something that uh, happens in the classroom just as a kind of fill in or a song because you can't think of anything better to do or something at the end of a unit. It's really a method, um, this uh, action song, fun songs method, a way of um, accelerating the learning process by giving the learners the new language in the form of an action song. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, Let me say this, it's extremely important as language teachers um, you know, who have to adhere to a curriculum, we have to finish the course book or finish a series of units by the end of the school year and there are all these constraints, tests that um, you know, schools these days have to, uh, teachers have to, to deal with and that's why um, you know, it really is important that that um, 
capsule of knowledge that is contained in the language song can be opened up into, uh, to enrich each learner's own um, knowledge of the language. Yeah? And as uh, Mario Rubicki says in the second part of that quote, at an, at an unconscious level, the language patterns and regularities are being absorbed for later free use. This is really important. We need to give the children the opportunity to go back and use the vocabulary and the language and the themes suggested in the song in different contexts for their own communicative need. Now, how do we do that? There is actually the danger of teaching words uh, and um, language chunks through songs that they just remain in the song, that the children don't really you know, do anything with them. Uh, a bit like uh, a poem or a prayer that if you can't remember it, you go back and, and then to the beginning and then it comes, it comes through like that. So it is very important to be able to break down in the child's mind the, uh, the song. And um, um, one way of doing that, that is what we call mime games, not mind games. Mime games where you bring up two children and you get them to, one of them makes, does some of the actions from the song and then the other child has to say what it is, but not in the order of the song, in a random order, so that they begin to to start to focus on the language chunks and the words in the so in, that are in the song, but, but not in the context of the song, you see what I mean. Of course, another very important way of doing that is uh, activities, worksheets, exercises, games, based on the uh, themes and words in the song itself, okay? So um, I'd just like to show you one which I've uh, provided here. It's um, on the lyrics of Time to Play, the song that you've just heard in the video. Uh, here it is. Let me make it a little bit bigger. And this is, you can see this is a very, very simple activity uh, based on some of the uh, key verbs in time to play. And this can almost be used for children who are just beginning to read and write. Um, talking about very young learners here. Um, so, I mean, you can see it's just simple. Uh, you photocopy it, you get them to color it and uh, you are focusing there on, on the verbs. And uh, this is a great way of uh, getting the children to think about the linguistic elements in the song in a way that they can then um, use in different activities and exercises. I often suggest to teachers that if you have a unit in your course book that you um, maybe replace the, uh, or anticipate the content of the unit with an action song which focuses on the vocabulary areas that you're going to find in that, that that's coming up, um, that, are, that will be coming up in the unit that you, you're about to teach. And that'll accelerate the learning um, that the children will, will need to know. Okay, um, shh, let's, um, right. I'd like to talk about another um, uh, action song. Uh, let me just look at the questions. Yeah, somebody mentioning Abilash, the, the pictures, of course, yeah. W with, the, um, with children, it's very important to have that, those graphic elements there. Uh, and uh, especially with this kind of material, which can be downloaded off the internet, and it's ob obviously, you know, it's in black and white, so there's always the opportunity to color and uh, work with, um, with um, the images there. Okay, I'd like to tell you a story. It's aliens from space who uh, land uh, in um, the country, in the countryside, uh, near the school that you're teaching at. And they are seen very early in the morning uh, by uh, the local inhabitants in a group marching down the road towards the village where everybody lives. And this is the introduction to a, an action song designed to teach uh, 14 parts of the body in less than 120 seconds. I think I mentioned it earlier in, in the webinar. <laughs> Who's that? Um, um, yeah. And uh, it's called The Monster March. And I'm going to show you the, the lyrics to this um, song and then I'll show you uh, a teaching video that we provide to teachers on our website 
to enable them to learn the song and the teaching actions before they present it to the class. So um, what I'm doing here is talking about the actual process of teaching an action song, song to your children. It is essential that uh, you, you know exactly how to uh, present the song. There's nothing worse than just putting on uh, an MP3 and giving the text to the children and expecting them to learn it like that. These songs have to be learned in a dynamic way in which uh, the teacher presents the words in the song, maybe first of all talking, just saying them, getting them to drilling it rather like a rap, and then gradually uh, brings them through to the end of the song so that they can then sing the song, the ideal uh, test, uh, with the music only version. But going back to our particular theme, this is a song called The Monster March. Let me go back to the presentation. And here we have actually the words to um, yeah, I think it's, yeah. yeah, so you can see the words there. It's um, I suppose it could be compared in a way to to a song like Heads, Hands, uh, Feet and Shoulders, but it has a lot more bone body parts in there, like fists, hips, and lips, um, and the point about this is that it, it, the children really enjoy it and they, they, they love doing this. And you can use this as the basis of uh, an activity which will cover that particular, that fundamental language area of parts of the body. So um, have a look at the words there. And you can then, uh, and I'm going to put on the video which shows how to. Um, to do the movements. Actually, the movements of this song are really quite intuitive because it, you know, it, follows, it follows along from the lines. Uh, but with a more abstract action song, the teaching actions have to be quite uh, carefully associated with the meaning in the language chunk. Let me put on the, um, the video, media player, and this is the Monster March. The Monster March. Here we go. Put two hands up, press your thumbs to your cheeks. Wiggle your fingers, stamp your feet. Now hang your arms, move your body around. Doing the monster march You push your left elbow out Bend your right wrist Punch your It's really a story, and if you could introduce it as a story um, of monsters who land near the school and terrify the children uh, and uh, march around the countryside, it gives the whole activity a certain dimension. 
which will further motivate the children. Again, I talked about performance earlier, and if the children that you're teaching these action songs to uh, know that, that at some stage in the near future they're going to be performing, getting up and standing in front of uh, their parents uh, or maybe other, other clients, some kind of um, meeting with, with, the, um, with the parents, that uh, gives the activity another dimension um, because, of course, the children want to to um, you know, they want to show off, they want to do their best. It's a great way of uh, showing the parents how well their children are doing um, this, this, this action song performance. Okay, um, like to go back, well not really go back, just to define um, what, uh, in my experience, I've been writing action songs for some years now, and um, what really are the key characteristics of uh, uh, effective language learning action song? Because it's it's not as simple as it sounds. I mean, um, I'm going to be doing a talk at the IATF uh, conference, which you may have heard of, that, that happens every year, um, the International Association of Teachers of Foreign Language in um, in England on how to write action song, and um, uh, I'm hoping there to to meet people who are, you know who play music, may play, play the guitar a bit, or enjoy music, and show them exactly how at least I, uh, over many years of experience and feedback and uh, mistakes, experiments, feedback from teachers, from children, organizing uh, theatre shows with action songs. Uh, the best uh, practices, if you like, of this particular um, approach to to language teaching. So let me go back to um, this slide here. Yeah. So what are the key characteristics of an action song module? What should we as teachers um, look for uh, if we think, if we are convinced that this method works? Uh, um, and we're looking for material. So this is the um, the answer that I would give to that. First of all, if you're going to write an action, or rather an action song module, remember I mentioned earlier that it's important that it's not just teaching a song, it's the song is the presentation vehicle of a series of lessons that are organized number of, um, of lessons. You know, it could be up to four or five lessons culminating in a performance for, for the school, uh, but also working and integrating the language uh, and structures in the song into the course. Yeah. So it's always important not to lose sight of the didactic value of the activity and not just see it as a way of letting off steam and having fun, even though those are important ingredients. So, in fact, um, the um, First characteristic of an action song is the melody of the uh, song itself. Now, it is obvious these days that you know there there are so many songs out there, and um, often um, um, the songs that you hear in language courses aren't particularly catchy. I mean, there are obviously. Uh, some language learning songs, but most of when we think about songs, we think about uh, mainstream famous songs uh, ranging from I don't know Jingle Bells to um, uh, that song that John Lennon wrote for Christmas. These are songs Jingle Jingle Bells again. <laughs> I don't. Some of these songs are great. They are all great. They have great tunes, but they have been. They're not actually. They haven't really been written for our particular purpose, which is teaching young children or teaching uh, beginners English. And that means that if you're starting to use mainstream songs, there is the risk that a lot of the language in there is going to be outside the physical scope of the children who are learning. Okay, So um, it is important to have, uh, first of all, catchy uh, tunes that the children enjoy. Uh, and um, which they really, you know, they want to learn. And uh, as I said, often the songs that you hear, um, I don't want to be rude about the British Council, but if you go onto the British Council 
uh, Young Learner site. There are some songs there with some videos, and uh, you know they are the most banal <laughs> uh, melodies you can imagine. I, I hope uh, I don't get into trouble for saying that, um, but um, anyway. Um, yeah, often the publishers, they don't have a clue about music. They just go and get something put to music, and the results are often not particularly inspiring. And the risk is that if you have an ugly song, or a song that's banal, even worse maybe, then the children aren't going to, you know, they're not going to do it. They're just going to, especially the, you know, eight and nine-year-olds who have already a certain experience. So it is important to have good, uh, catchy, earworm tune. What do I mean by earworm? Tunes that remain in your comeback, and sometimes it's really annoying. You've had that experience of a tune. But if you can put that tune to useful words and language, then you have, again, this effective uh, um, action song, consoles method, which I mentioned earlier. Um, so that's the first characteristic. The second, obviously, goes uh, back to what I was saying about pronunciation. Rhythm is essential, not just because a strong rhythm is attractive, it makes the, uh, the song itself um, yeah, more enticing, uh, catchier, but because a strong rhythm also helps accentuation and encourages correct pronunciation. You know, the meter of the song, the rhythm, I could talk about that in more detail, but it is important for these songs to have a strong rhythm to help with pronunciation. What are the songs about? Again, I mentioned this earlier, you can't um, expect uh, a song that has been written for the mass market, uh, a pop song, for example, um, which um, you know, can be useful to a certain extent, but if we're talking about primary school children, pop songs really are completely inappropriate for the very reason that pop songs are written for teenagers and they uh, are about aspects relationships really aren't interested in. So um, this is the point. There aren't that many songs that have specifically been written, written for this uh, purpose in mind. It is essential to have um, songs whose content can be recycled and used uh, in the context of a language course for young learners. And um, that's why um, I pay great attention to uh, writing words which are uh, useful to the students, that are useful to the course, that can um, present uh, the uh, key language structures that a young learner's course has. Okay, um, just looking at the chat, methodology called musicology which uses Yes, that's that's very interesting. I've mean, sure heard about that. Yep. Okay, who's that? Late, Carlos. Why are you late? <laughs> okay, so uh, useful words and structures, and another characteristic which is really important is the way in which the songs are taught. Here we're talking about action songs, so the teaching actions have to be meaningful. Um, I don't know whether you could see me in, in the um, in the web. Can you see that? And um, what I'm going to do... Actually, maybe it's better on the guitar. Let me think. Um, Okay, no, I'll, I'll do it on the piano. I'm just going to play a little bit of a song which I wrote for. Um, And why am I t suddenly talking about this? Because of this third point of um, meaningful teaching actions. Because the song Easter Easter uh, has quite a lot of abstract words in it, abstract language chunks. It's not like the Monster March or Time to Play where the actions are actually in the words themselves. Let me show you a verse. So.
Can you hear that? <laughs> What's the match? There's two chords on the piano. Okay. January, February nights are long. Cold wet mornings and little sun. But now it's spring and Easter's very near. Now it's spring and Easter's almost here. Okay, that was the um, the first two verses of Easter Easter, and I don't know whether you actually understood what I was saying. If the microphone got the words there, I haven't actually got it on the screen here, but it was. Um, yes, we're all here. January, and, uh, we're really February, excited. Nights are long. To hear Cold, and see you. I don't know why you don't uh, hear us. We're all no, clapping spring. hands and, and um, enjoying everything here. that you're. So the point is, we're this. here. We're How here. You we, don't hear uh, us. Teach <laughs> the uh, language chunks. Um, January, February nights are long. Any suggestions? Through actions. Hello. Anybody there? <laughs> well, I, I, hi, Nelly. Nelly, yeah, I put a very specific question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, I mean, I, I, I did pose a very specific question about uh, uh, how we could uh, uh, teach that uh, those words through um, an action song, but I didn't see any answers to it. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'll, I'll just repeat the verse again. January, February. Uh, the way that we do it and uh, is very simply um, January, February, so the numbers represent the months of the year, January, February, okay, nights are long, January, February, nights are long, and you get the children to repeat that, first of all you can actually just say it, January, February, nights are long. Everybody repeats it. And you can go into the second line. Cold, 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 wet mornings. More. Now, there are three words there. Cold, wet mornings. But you can't have, really, you have to be careful when you're um, choreographing an action song not to have too many teaching actions. Otherwise, the child's mind becomes overwhelmed and it becomes complicated. So we've got cold, wet mornings. You just wrap your arms around you, yourself and you've got, you can convey the idea of, of um, low temperatures, especially in Latvia and um, England <coughs> and northern Italy, places I know well. Uh, cold, wet mornings and little, little, so little sun. Um, but now it's spring, Easter's, <coughs> excuse me, and Easter's, Easter, Easter is very near. So this is the, the, the point, that a um, word like Easter, how can you convey Easter in an action? Well, any suggestions? I saw somebody mentioning months. We do actually have a wrap for months, but Easter, is often associated with Easter eggs. So you make this gesture here. It works very well in in, uh, in Europe. An Easter egg. Now, pointing to your wrist, now it's spring and Easter's very near. Your hands come together. So this is the point about meaningful teaching actions. Uh, I'm not saying that the teaching actions that we uh, provide teachers with our videos are teaching, uh, teaching um, videos on, on YouTube, which you can see if you go to the Fun Songs channel there, are the definitive way of teaching the song. But they are, believe me, the, um, the fruit of, of many different attempts of finding the, the most um, the most effective, the most useful teaching actions for conveying the meaning of these. Column is really the name of the 
I'm going to go on now towards the end of the uh, session because it's, um, uh, we've only got a few more minutes left. Just to give you an idea of how I have um, tried to associate particular songs with specific language themes, let me show you this. And you can see there on the left um, a, a series of songs uh, which um, time to play we, we you heard earlier in the webinar there's the monster march and um, so the first column is really the name of the song the second column is uh, the themes that are in the song the vocabulary areas if you like and then for teachers who are particularly keen on um, the structures and grammar uh, then in the third column we actually have a breakdown and analysis of the uh, grammar content in the action songs. So all these actions you can find on the Fun Songs website. Um, you can also download uh, a free action song package uh, but if you actually want to use the full package you, there's a, a, a few euros you have to pay to be able to do it because it costs as you can imagine quite a lot to do all this. Um, so, at this point, thank you. I'd like thank to thank you everyone so much, for coming Charles. along, and uh, above all, thank the you. people at WizIQ and Nelly Deutsch, who it's always a great pleasure to, to, to communicate oh, with. Oh, that's why I was wondering why you're in such a slide. hurry. Um, I did actually try and put in the, the URL for fun songs, but for some reason, the WizIQ oh, okay. couldn't pass it properly, and it came out with rubbish. Uh, letters but um, it's very we simple it's just fun songs this, uh, Charles, I noticed and that I'd be uh, very happy to communicate uh, Tom with anyone has added who's interested a in, link in, um, to the WizIQ um, so, um, MOOC thanks very much area again. where uh, we can uh, continue uh, yeah we can continue this minutes, later on questions? we can uh, continue it tomorrow I'll sign off. it's I asynchronous so there's no problem it doesn't have it's not live but it's a place where we can continue the discussion it's actually a discussion form under course feed you can also um, add <laughs> yeah i've kind of put my foot down a bit um, towards the end any there. other links yeah. but no no, no I, I can still and I you can, can share it with uh, with minutes, us but um, i'm yeah, sure there are a lot of things maybe go. youtube video links and so, things that you have not this classroom in in no into <laughs> no this is going to end Hodges, no into yeah. the yeah uh, there's a whiz iq if you copy chat everybody you can also get this later but there's a link there let me add the link for you so you can see it do you see the link yeah yeah exactly you can go in there right, yeah. and we can continue um sharing links and uh, continue the discussions and then you can pick up your wife i also wanted to say that charles and i are planning to do things together uh, I was supposed to be next to Charles Okay, today, so you're saying I not. just come back in, into I'm, this classroom and can put stuff up in my on, on the office chat. and not over there. But I'm hoping that uh, we will, yeah, we will be doing things together. So look for Charles and I. Uh, we uh, we promise you. Uh, they know me as the dancer, Charles. So I'll be doing yeah, the, uh, the the, the dancing, speed, and yeah. Charles is going to be doing the singing <laughs> for action songs. I'll be doing the action. You'll be doing the songs. So uh, we're looking forward to that, and uh, we'll probably be giving um, a course on WizIQ, and yeah. we're all invited to join. Yeah, so stay tuned for a lot of um, things happening, and uh, fun songs still for adults, not only for kids, for everybody. Virtual relationship. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Charles. See you very soon. Bye for now. Looking forward to seeing you do that, yeah, yeah.